Today we're just taking advantage of the inshore fishing because offshore is way too rough out there. Even inshore is probably a little bit rough, but we'll make it work because we know what we're doing. Beautiful Sand Sprit Park, guys. This is uh, Stewart, Florida. It's a Sunday and there is parking. Isn't that crazy? Usually the cars are parked on top of each other here on the Sunday. Definitely got plenty of parking spots for your trailers. Also, this is an excellent spot to catch live bait. It's high tide right now. There goes the dock from the marina. We'll get back with you guys in a second here. We gotta put this bad boy in the water. Yeah, what do we got in this bucket here right now? Yeah, it's a lot of live shrimp. Are they dead? No, nah, they're not dead. Oh. I put the bubbler on them this time. Burn the game. Burn the game. Burn the game. <laughs> there we go. This is Master Stank Bait right here, Captain Stank Yo, Bait. Captain. Captain Stank Bait, you know. He's the captain today because look, we see where his hand's at. Yeah. That means that he is the captain, ladies and gentlemen. I get to pick the fish spot. And he gets to pick the fish spot even though I cry and moan until he, you know, he'll kick me off the boat. Yeah, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible first deck man, you know. I want to fish here. Yeah. I do what I want, you know. I'm so used to that. Whatever, hey, he's got, he's got a deal with me. I don't put him on the fish. I don't care. I know the rat. I know the spot like the back of my hand. I don't care. So freaking how you really fish this area. But look at ladies and gentlemen, this is uh Sanskrit Park back there. And this is the Indian River Lagoon. We have mangroves to fish off. We have beaches to fish off. Look to your right, that's where the inlet's at. But we're not going out of there because this is a little bit too rough. There we are. That's where we're going. Are you kidding me? That's where we're going? Yeah, we're going to hit it. High time. Screw it. As you see, ladies and gentlemen, this is the setup that we're using. The current trip is pretty good right now, so we have about a hunt ounce and a half sinker to about three feet of pink fluorocarbon with a one ounce or a one oh circle hook hooked in the tail. And look at this. That's what that generates. That right there is a keeper she pit. And that's where you get them. Find yourself some current, some rocks. That's the spot, ladies and gentlemen. You got one in the boat. If you look out in the distance, the waves are crashing, looking like buildings out there. They're so high. But yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, we're hooked up. Look at that, another one. I got him, oh, there we go. There goes another one. The captain, oh, yeah. captain puts you on him. Beautiful, another specimen. Cheap head, baby. That's how we do. 
You see how that circle hook gets him? He is not going nowhere. Check it out. Right in the corner of his mouth. Right in the corner of his mouth. See those teeth? That is exactly where you want that hook. See his face? <laughs> yeah. Guy, but he's very tasty. That's uh, number three right there. Every now and again, you fish that live shrimp setup. With a one ounce hook, and uh, you end up with one of these bad boys. <laughs> what we call snow Beautiful ocean snook right here. See the colors on him? Yeah. Got him, exactly. Wow. See that, ladies and gentlemen? We'll go ahead and release this baby. Let me put this phone down for one second. Beautiful stork. Snook. Catch and release. Oh, let it revive. Hopefully a shark don't take my hand as I'm doing this. You ready, buddy? <laughs> he won't let go of my finger. Look at that. <laughs> Later, buddy. He went back home. They're literally probably about, about maybe a hundreds of snook down there. What's happening is that the water is being released from this neighborhood and it is creating a natural feeding ground. All the snook got to do is sit in front of it like a buffet line. All right, let me get back to getting, to getting some more fish in this bucket. So far, we're doing all right. Got a 17, a 13, and a 12 incher in there. See how many we can get. Yeah, so one thing I want to say is thank you guys for watching. Uh, definitely plan your sheephead fishing trip accordingly you know we kind of are a little organized on this trip we wanted to pay attention to the tides making sure we caught the incoming tide uh definitely um you you would like to have the water a little bit higher because that's when the, the sheep head are definitely going after those crabs the shrimps the crustaceans they love clams they love oysters um and uh, that, that high tide gives them a chance to get all those little guys that are hiding from them on that low tide. So once that high tide raises, they're definitely up on them, on those rocks, scourging through them. So definitely look for structure and for current. Um, definitely keep in mind that uh, it's spawning season right now for the sheep head. So they're definitely going to be bunched up where they're usually honing at. Always remember uh, have a have a have a scoop net on you because some of these guys can get pretty heavy. You can't really just sling them into the boat. Um, and you know, just plan it out. You know, you want your tide to be right. You want the feeding time, the first major, the second major, the first minor, or the second minor feeding time. I uh, use the FWC app. That really helps me out a lot. Um, you'll have all that information on there so definitely go out there and go and catch them up thank you again for watching and uh, God bless you all have a good night have a good day go and get them <laughs>